Hello, everyone. Welcome to Conscious Design Podcast. I'm your host, Ian Peterman, and I'm here with Tom to talk about circuit boards, something that we, we all think we know everything about them at this point, uh, but we don't. So welcome. Welcome to being on the show. Really good to have you here. Thanks, Ian. Yeah, so I know we've talked about what you do and board efficiencies and how to make you know, circuit boards more sustainable, more effective uh, cost-wise, things like that. But could you explain a little bit about what you're, what you're doing and kind of the, the waste that we're, we're not looking at and, not, and haven't been seeing? Excellent. Yes. Thanks for that question. Thanks for having me on. So here at the panel, right, we've, uh, we've uncovered that uh, industry-wide, there's um, um, waste that's generated back up at the supply house when they're making your printed circuit board. So this is, it's difficult if not impossible for any of the OEMs or contract manufacturers or whatnot to see, uh, because when they're presented with their panel, uh, that the board house has done their best on for you. Um, they're not. They're not seeing that um, the board house is really happy with an eighty percent utilization. Uh, if we can, if we can say that. So, um, in an eighty billion dollar industry, um, I'm seeing the potential of saving companies that first. 25% on average is, is what I see when I go in and I take a look at your current selection of, uh, of panels for your PCBs. So um, it's, it's, a, it's a bit of an education um, uh, because it's uh, pretty cloaked um, in discovery, but um, I think to Simplify it. The best way to do is just to reach out and, and let us and let us test your current um, production and uh, let us see where you fall in on uh, on that on that curve. So uh, we can go into uh, a number of um, reasons why that is what it is. Uh, I think the, the the biggest reason is the industry is really set up for speed, supplying the customer with their quickest. Um, quickest to market um, product, which is the cir printed circuit board so that they can produce what they're producing and, and go. So what that means is out of the literally thousands of, I will call them pure panels that are available, most um, board houses really have two methods that they, they like to use to service their customer. If their customers um, are, are pretty much landing on one of the six different master panel sizes, pretty much everything that they're going to be supplying to their customer base is going to be based on one of those current sizes. And you can think of the, the master panel sizes as pieces of plywood in different sizes, you know, for because it, it is all board industry and paper industry driven for um for efficiencies on, on their end. So what that in out of the six master sizes, there may be some bigger companies that use a smattering of some of those sizes across across the board. Uh, but in either case, they're only looking at uh, you know a mere handful of what's available out there again. So they can get your board panelized and uh, and get you get you started. And the on the purchasing side, on the OEM purchasing side, uh, their only ability to check uh, on the supplier how well the supplier is doing is to bid that board out to different supply houses. Problem is, is your your waste is already built in, and the other suppliers are going to quote you the same the same price based on that design. Um, so you're never going to see that um, how much how much waste there was up front. And 
and then uh, uh, away they go. I mean, and they are happy with um, giving you 80% utilization. So um, everybody in that case is happy. Um, what they don't tell you is you as the OEM or the contract manufacturer, you're paying for that waste, whether you realize it or not. And you just don't see it because that's already trimmed off your board by the time you get it and put it on your SMT PCBA process line and um, manufacture that, populate it, um, test it, um, and put it in your product. So um, that's that's sort of the um, you know first pass high look um, at the opportunity that's out there. Um, okay. So any any opportunity to reach out and get the message out is really is really welcome. I think it'll do it'll go a long way to again reducing that toxic material from the get go. It'll give capacity back to the board houses uh, because they won't be wasting as much, and you'll be paying a lower price for your circuit board, which in most cases is one of the top five most expensive. Uh, line items on your bomb when it comes to uh, that printed circuit board itself, uh, being the printed circuit board itself, with right. all the chips in that that go on there. Well, and you mentioned so you mentioned eighty percent efficiency, and I think we we talked about. I worked in like sheet metal and things like that, where you you are doing terrible if you're below ninety percent. Right? There's a there's a huge efficiency drive. Uh, to maximize <laughs> maximize your material, and I worked at companies where ninety five percent was the minimum minimum goal uh, in order to use up the sheet metal as efficiently as possible. So it's it's kind of an interesting, but that one a lot more people are able to do themselves, right? They have in, more in house capability to do. You know, you're you're more one person, one company will take raw material they'll cut it form it and do everything themselves and create a product where circuit boards are a little bit more step in process right somebody makes the board then somebody cuts the board and then somebody works from there and it's not not the same you can't just set up a, sh a machine shop and, <laughs> and start stamping some some uh, circuit boards right away so there's so there's that that process so kind of how because I, I working in design, I never knew how inefficient circuit boards are. And I've been ordering boards for uh, a long time now. So what's what kind of led you to figure out this inefficiency and how kind of how did we arrive arrive here basically? <laughs> how did we get yeah. here and how'd you figure it? How'd you figure it out? Okay. So you you want the long story. Yeah. Um, so I, I grew up in, in the high tech industry. You know, I've been working with PC boards for 40 odd years now and started out more on the um, manufacturing engineering end, if you will. Uh, but as I was I'm an industrial engineer by trade training. So as I was, um, you know, through course of events, uh, laying out factories, um, working with logistics teams, working with uh, product planning teams, um, program management, um, and on the factory floor, relaying out for one piece flow, um, automation, doing automation. It was really when I did the automation, I first learned how cloak and dagger PC board design is because I needed to make a change to the PC board. And I quickly ran into the, the wall of, oh my, you know, we spent whatever to, to get this science thing lined up. We were not going to touch this thing. Um, and it wasn't until I crossed over into <clears throat> the R and D side of the world where this particular chief engineer that I was working under really understood 
how utilization had a direct effect on uh, the pricing of the boards. And he would have layout parties where he would gather all the product design engineers, the electrical engineers, the mechanical engineers, the PCB layout engineers, literally into a conference room for days where they would be drawing different panels, different stack ups, different orientations to utilize more of the material and to keep the prices low. Um, and that for me was when the light went off that PCBs over the course of their existence are nothing more than a cog in the manufacturing process that really dictates whether how well it's laid out or the panelization of it dictates one the waste that you're going to get up front at the board house and how efficient on the back end your pcb operation is really going to run and that's sort of been stuck in this last iteration and hasn't changed and the process that's been used has been handed down engineer to engineer over the over the tens of decades that boards have been in, been involved um, that as an industrial engineer I just I just went back and just reconstituted the process from scratch and then the, the you know the light at the end of the tunnel came when I realized the information that they everyone has at the OEM manufacturer level is incomplete to what the board house people are actually delivering. Um, so that mismatch has sent this on its path, uh, controlled its path for the duration. And it, it seems like uh, speed, speed has been probably one of the main main drivers of it because obviously if you're sitting for days and days uh thinking about how to lay out a board and make it more efficient that's time right that that adds days to your production time so is there a way around that is there something is there a balance where we can you know aim for 90 percent is that and still be efficient is there automation kind of what's because obviously nobody wants to give up speed, or at least it's a harder sell, right? <laughs> to to give up speed, um, but unless there's a huge cost savings, right? So there's always right there's always that balanced conversation. So I guess how are you how are you approaching that? So so I am at the stage where I'm still the only one that can do can do this work. Uh, and I know in order to replicate this and really spread this far and wide, um, you know, software is, will have to be developed that will have all the rules and um, guardrails in it so that it then can be widely distributed so that industries can do it themselves. Fortunately, we're still a year to five years away from that happening. So in the meantime, uh, I'm working to uh, essentially generate the capital that I can then work with the right industries and that to, to really put a package around this. Because you're right. Um, so we are aligned with um, uh, the ECM group, which is a consortium of board manufacturers. In fact, it was um, the CEO of that group that reached out to me when, when I became available um, as I came out of private industry that um, commented that I'm the only one that, that does this um, and that I needed to do this now for the rest of, rest of the world because it's 
no, it's not happening today. Of course, they work with clients that are doing 10,000 new designs a day, which is immediately overwhelming for me. But um, <laughs> that's so a lot to, for any any one person. <laughs> yeah. But uh, but I need to start. I need to start somewhere um, in order to um, generate the capital needed to actually turn this into a, a a global program that can be used globally. This works for any PC board in any industry. Uh, flex, whether it's flex, rigid, rigid flex, or um, or film, and. Uh, you know, con consumers, I've, I've talked to uh, a lot of uh, my, my former manufacturing engineers that, that knew what I was doing, know what I was doing, and that are now at different places. And, you know, the peer comes to their eye when they see what's happening at their current place of employment versus what they've known me to do for them in the past. So the need is out there and it's, it's education that's, that's gonna get us, get us closer every day. So your focus, and I think you mentioned this when we were chatting just, just before starting to record, education is, is really your focus right now. So are you, are you seeing companies want to do this? Are there like, is there sectors or certain companies that are really wanting to do this? Or are you still just in the, hey, guys, look at what I found. <laughs> let's let's learn how to do this better and still in that, you know, kind of education only part. Um, so we've been doing this for really since January of this year. Um, and the, 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 the message has has reached uh, people, we can't predict who is going to receive the message and how that message is gonna get translated into their organization because every organization is set up differently. Every organization does their PC boards differently and quite challengingly, most people within the organization may not even know who's doing the boards internally. So reaching out and finding that right person is, is sort of a um, needle in the haystack problem that we're running into right now. Now, the, we've reached out to thousands of different companies at this point. Now, the, we're getting traction we're seeing the most traction right now with procurement people. Here's, here's a way that they are being, we're telling them that they can save money on their PC board. So they're interested. So the ones that are really tied in and um, um, can, guide their organizations are pulling us in for a test. Um, a lot of them, when they reach out to their, uh, to their um, engineering entity, the engineers say, you know, we already do this. We already have a group that does this. We're, we already know we're doing the best we can and pretty much shut it down. Uh, but the ones that do break through and actually give us a, um, board to look at a solution, we're finding anywhere from the lowest is 5%, the highest is 50%. Uh, it, it, wow. it, it depends on, so the average is 25. <laughs> it's the average is 25%. And we can tell, we can tell exactly where they either um, are heading in the right direction, um, have the right idea, but maybe their board house just is, you know, isn't isn't looking at all the solutions that, that are available to them. And they don't really know that there's something, um, another size out there. Board houses will make anything that I, that any, anything that I design, the board houses will make. In fact, the ECM group is, is our trusted global supplier any design that they come up with i know that they're going to be able to make for the price that i that i um 
give a, a company. Uh, but most companies still want to work with their own suppliers, which is absolutely fine. They just may reach out with my design and uh, their supplier may come back and say, well, you know, you know, we don't carry that size. Well, maybe they don't, but in this case, they should. And there's no reason why they can't get the sizes that I um, offer. It's just that they, it's more convenient for them just to stock their shelves with the, whatever right. their biggest supplier is consuming, that's what they're going to stock their shelves with. Right. Now, is this, is this a, you know, if you're running a company and you're putting circuit boards into your product, is this a design solution that kind of at what stage, which, which entity in this process, right? Because you have a board house, you have whoever produces, you know, actually puts the components on it. And then you have, you know, probably a few more companies involved. So where's, which company can really drive it is if I run a product company and I have a product with a circuit board in it, can I actually drive this requirement or do you, are you talking to people, you know, closer to the board manufacturer? Like what's your, who can drive this really, <laughs> this, this efficiency? Yeah, so so we can we can um, engage at any any stage of um, you know from the prototype design uh, right through launch and even on a continuing engineering uh, basis. If somebody wants to go back and take a look at any potential savings that they could yield that their board could yield for them. Um, and the only difference between the two is once you've already put that board uh, in a panel that you've made and then uh, put in your product, my solution in that savings that, that is going to generate of what you would have been paying or what to what you would now pay um, would need to go into most likely um, to reset up your PCBA line. You'd, you'd need new stencils for your SMT. You'd need, okay. uh, because it'll be a different, it'll be a different panel size, may or may not be a different um, uh, circuit count on the panel, a different up, you know, four right, up versus right. six up. Um, and then of course your test fixtures, any, anything that uh, the, the panels used for would need to be updated and that cost accounted for to see if the savings um, were enough. So if you're if you're if you're a manufacturer that's making um, um, onesie twosies thousands kind of thing, you definitely want to be upfront in the process because you don't want to have to spend your money on your downline capital uh, twice. Right. Yeah. And Nobody wants to do that. Right. <laughs> And then anybody that's um, already out in production, if you're making millions of units and we're going to save you, you know, penny, nickel, dime, 40 cents, you know, a dollar, it, it depends. Um, you, may take, you may take that information and say, ooh, I want to do better next time and not actually do anything in this product. But at least now you know that we can we can anchor you based on whatever you're going to conventionally get um, early in the process. And we'll work through all the iterations as you iterate on your design. Because we uh, you know, worked in R and D for years. Nothing's out of the, comes out of the, the shoot right or <laughs> satisfactorily <laughs> the first time. Um, but we'll iterate right along with you. In fact, we will actually partner with you um, and all this is all this is free. Um, it's just part of our service. But we can tell you, for example, um, marketing comes down and says, "Hey, we absolutely need this new feature on this board. You know, design it in." And everybody goes, "Well, in order to do that, I got to grow the board." Well, we can tell you how best to grow the board without increasing your cost, or we can tell you the growth that you're doing on this board is going to cost you this much we can right. get down to that fine of detail. Same time, if we're working with you up front and doing iterations, we're gonna evaluate your board 
for any cost saving, additional cost savings. So you may have a design that um, started out with your MEs filling out whatever the product profile is, and it happens to be a you know a strange shape or whatever it is. But they're doing that in order to preserve as much board space because they're you know upfront in the process. They're not sure how much layout guys are going to need for for whatever it is, so they try to give them the most. Um, but again, we, we have the capability where we can look at that design and look at your panelization and then recommend, suggest where uh, judicious trimming millimeters, fractions of a millimeter count in, in, this, in this world that we're playing in, where you can maybe trim or, or do something else, you would look at that, run it through uh, your processes of manufacturing electrical uh, test. And if you approve that, then maybe I'll get you another 10% on, on your board, board savings, or you would get another 10% on your board savings. Again, we can tell you what that change would cost or save. Um, right. Rail thicknesses, anything, anything that has to do with the board. Once we get your model in, installed and we get your conventional price, we can determine um, lots of different savings. Which also brings up the fact that most most of the world panelizes one circuit type per per um, panel. It'll be a six up of one board, say your product takes three boards, you know, maybe it's a six up of this one board, it's a four up of another board, and it's an eight up on the third board. Well, your production planning people have to manage all that. How many panels of each one do I have to send down the line? And you as the manufacturer, have your guys set up the line, run however many panels you need of that, of each one of those, test them and they wait at the end of your line until all of your panels have gone through and then you can start building um, product and then functionally test them. And then you find out that you have a problem on board number two. Uh, well, now everything's either gonna go for rework or you're gonna make panel two all over again, depending on what the issue is. So we will work with any, OEM or contract manufacturer. And what we like to do is we like to build what we call family panels. So we will look at your product. We will look at the type of boards that you have. And if it makes sense uh, where the technology is, is, is close enough, we'll optimize in that case, all three circuits on one panel. So that when you send that panel down the line now, you're gonna, um, panel five sets of three boards to make five good product at the end of that run. So that means on Monday morning, when you set up your line and you start running by Monday afternoon, you're already seeing if you've got good product. And if you don't, you're good in circuit tests that you're going to catch whatever issue that you have and make that correction right away. So scenario one, you've bought test equipment for three, three boards, um, line fixtures, screens, um, and you start building your product on Thursday. And in our, our method, we like to first cost reduce your three circuits so that they're um, cost efficient. Again, probably on average saving you 25% per circuit material wise. Then we like to, without increasing the cost, take those three and put those onto um, a single family panel that you uh, buy your test fixtures, screens, and, and infrastructure set up for just that one panel. So that saves you two thirds of your capital cost and it gets you to production two thirds faster. You're starting to produce Monday versus waiting for Thursday. So your throughput goes up, your efficiency on your PCBA side goes up 50% or more um, every time we do that. And again, you're still paying the lower 20, you still save 25% on your material cost. Right. And you're reducing waste, which is always. people 
people <laughs> are uh, caring about a lot more now and looking at supply chain. So it seems like a pretty no brainer if you want to reduce reduce your waste. If you're you know saying oh we have an environmentally friendly mission, we we care about this stuff. This would be this would definitely be something that you should be looking at and how to reduce waste and it'll save money which is always good it's always a, a good thing to be able to be more sustainable and <clears throat> save some money so so this would be so more on the education you know you look at the alliances that are out there measuring you know the carbon footprints of companies and what their chemical that are putting into the air or into the ground or, or whatever the one thing that they don't measure is printed circuit board material. So if we could get that incorporated into, into uh, the mainstream, then absolutely. We can calculate how many square feet of material you saved from being created in the first place that you're no longer using and ends up as scrap on the board house floor before it gets to you that then, you know, depanel and then have your own depanel scrap that you're, you're uh, have to deal with in an environmentally friendly way. So um, we can calculate all that. We can keep track of that for uh, each, each customer so that if they can use that to whatever offset carbon footprint, they could get credit for that. Awesome. Well, this has been, really informational i'm really really happy that we were able to connect and and have you on a show and you know for every everyone who's wanting to make a better supply chain for their pcbs what you know how can they get a hold of you and what is that what is that process you mentioned being able to take a look at their board so yeah share that yeah um so Right now, our website is uh, www.panelright.com, uh, all one word, and R um, for right. Um, my email is uh, Tom underscore askew, A-S-K-E-W, um, at panelright.com. And also my LinkedIn address um, is uh, I believe it's T T ask you six Oh two five on LinkedIn. Perfect. Um, so. And we'll make sure all those links are in the show notes too. Yeah. So. Yeah. Yep. That'll, that'll get you started and you would treat us just like you would treat any of your board suppliers. We just, t- just send us your Gerber. If you need an NDA in place first, we're happy to do NDAs. Um, but um, your, your Gerber, we're going to have that competitively quote. Uh, so you have an apples to apples with what you're currently paying. We're going to use the our ECM partner, ECM group partners to do that anywhere in the world. Um, so you'll have that as comparison. And then we'll give you the panel rate price of um, an optimized uh, design that we can then iterate on and discuss and go through all your DFMs and um, we're, we're happy to do all that. That's what we do all day, every day. Amazing. All right. Well, anyone that wants to make their circuit board better should definitely reach out to Tom and, and <laughs> save some money and, and some efficiency there. There you so, go. Save awesome. The world. Awesome. Hey. Well, thank you so much. Really good having you on the show. Thank you, Ian. A pleasure. <laughs>